okay? And so all I'm saying is, as far as a social goal, get involved in something uh, that, that it's close to your heart that you want to invest in your time, effort, and energy. Okay, and as far as recreational goals, you know, hey, take a break every once in a while. You know, go fishing, go hunting, go water skiing, whatever, you, whatever turns you on, right? But you've got to get out and get under the stars and lay on your back and look up and just see how blessed we are, what a magnificent world that, that we're in. And, and you, but you've got to stop and get silent for a minute and make that happen and get out under the trees and then now take your five subject notebook and instead of just writing out the goals on this piece of paper, you know, really sit down and get you a glass of wine or whatever your fancy is and, and get in your hammock and sit there and really start to plan out your GPS of who you are, where you're going, how you're going to get there and what the end result is. That is absolutely so critical because people want to follow people that know who they are, where they're going, how they're going to get there, and what the end result is. Just look at Forrest Gump. <laughs> Forrest started running, right? Everybody started following him. They said, where is he going? I don't know where he's going, but I'm going that way with him because he seems like he knows where he's going. Okay? Leadership's a lot the, like the same way, right? So just keep in mind, I know you're not Forrest Gump, but, uh, uh, but you know, just... Try to get some direction, and, and your goals, your personal goals, are really what help you on a, on a personal direction uh, note. I want to make sure I'm on time here, uh, so make sure, okay, got gotcha. you. Anyway, so let's uh, go ahead, teach a man to fish, feed him for life. Who's ever heard that before? Anybody? Okay, that's what my goal is here uh, for you today. My goal is for you to be able to be dropped out of a helicopter somewhere, and I don't, in any market, and not know anybody, just totally be cold. And remember, we're a warm market business, are we not? That's what we are. But, but if the, uh, I, there's a saying, I'd rather be a master prospector than a wizard of speech and have no one to tell my story to. <laughs> what that means is, is that you can be the world's greatest salesman or salesperson and not ever tell your story. And what do we do in this business? We tell a story. That's really ultimately what we do. We tell the ambit story. And it's absolutely critical that you get in front of what is called a class A prospect or a quality prospect because I believe personally that all of the problems, all of the issues, all of the success and failure in this business, and listen very carefully because I've been at this about 30 years now, all of the success and failure starts in the beginning when you sponsor people into your business and the quality of people that you sponsor into your business. Now they come in all shapes and sizes. You know, there's no common denominator to what they look like, and their, once again, their religious affiliation, their job description, that has absolutely nothing to do with it. But they do have some common denominators that I've been able to identify over years that I want you to be able to help now, uh, uh, help you identify. One of the things that I like to talk a little bit about is the five personality characteristic traits that I look for when I go out and talk to people um, and do some uh, coal market or prospecting in general. And it doesn't necessarily have to be coal market. I even qualify my warm market with that as well. But the first and foremost is what I call money motivated. Everybody say money motivated. Money now, I don't mean greed motivated. I mean they're just money motivated. They have a chip in their computer, okay, that says that they are wanting to make more money. They want more financial success in life. And because of that, believe it or not, there are people out there that don't have that chip. They don't have the chip, and your job is not to sponsor those people in your business, okay? <laughs> you don't want to drag people kicking and screaming against their will through the doorway of success. That's not your job. And if you will spend more quality time as the HR director in your own business, right, you get to handpick the people that you're going to work with in your business. I want you to visualize this. I want you to be on the 70th floor downtown. You're in a huge high-rise building in Dallas, downtown or Fort Worth. You're on the 70th floor looking out over. You have a beautiful palatial uh, conference room with a long oak table and high back leather chairs. You got that picture? Okay, it's got chandeliers on the wall, thick carpet, oil paintings, you know, beautiful flowers in the center. You got the picture? And you're sitting there at the helm of your conference table in a high back leather chair and you're looking out over downtown, and as you look down the, the table there, your conference table, nobody is sitting in the 25 chairs that are sitting at your table. In other words, the chairs are empty. 
Your job over the next two years is to go out and make sure that you put the right people that are going to write the insurance policy for your success and their success in those chairs. You're going to want to go out and find people that are going to have a certain cal uh, ca characteristics that I'm sharing with you here today that I think uh, will be helpful in measurably helping you be successful from the beginning instead of trying to herd chickens all the time. Have you ever, have you ever just like, chicken, 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 chicken. Okay, that's what we spend our time doing all the time, herding chickens, okay? No more herding chickens, okay? This is going up San Juan Hill with a whole bunch of people following you, you know, going like this with the flag and taking no names. So the first and foremost thing out of all of the other four or the total of five personality characteristic traits is they've got to be money motivated, okay? The second one is goal directed. What did we just talk about before we just got started? We talked about what? Personal goals and the importance of personal goals. Now, most people have cosmos goals. They're just out there floating and flying. You know, you know, they're just out there just floating around, okay? Uh, but when you make them written and specific with a deadline for their attainment and you crystallize your thinking to where you know that in your sunken living room you have a red Italian couch and you know the type of leather that you're going to have that couch be, okay, or where your barbecue pit's going to be and your infinity pool and the whole deal, I mean, you've got to visualize what it is that's when it really gets exciting. And you have to find people that sometimes they're not that specific with regards to their personal goals, but they're goal directed. They want something more out of life. And a lot of times it, uh, it's materialistic in the beginning. The second thing you want to look for is somebody who has a burning desire to succeed. Now, what do I mean by that? In other words, they have an internal glow and motivation to, re to, to, to achieve a higher level of both financial success and personal success in their life, okay? And I know what you're saying to yourself, Lane, how do I find all these people? I'm about to share with you how you make that happen, okay? So just bear with me. I'm just describing what you're looking for, okay? The, um, the next one is probably also one of the most important personality characteristic traits, which is to be able to find somebody who has a strong, powerful center of influence. Coach Allen is a prime example, okay? If you take people that are, uh, you know, out in the community, I mean, I don't want a mechanic doing brain surgery on me. I don't know about you, okay? But, but I'm not signing up for it. And my point is, is that there, there are people out there that have huge centers of influence. And it's like dropping a, you know, it's like the old Cajun joke that you talked about. A, a, you, you're from Louisiana, right? It's about the Moss Frost, you know, they, they go out there and, they're out in the swamp and there's two guys, he's taking him out fishing and Moss France drops the anchor, you know, and the guy had never been fishing out in the swamp in Louisiana before and Moss France reaches underneath the, his seat, you know, and he pulls out this stick of dynamite and he fires it up and throws it over the side of the boat, kaboom, you know. All these fish flow up, flow up and the guy's just, he's just totally freaked out, you know. Moss France reaches underneath his seat again and lights another stick of dynamite and hands it to him and says, you gonna talk or you gonna fish? I want to teach you how to fish with dynamite, okay? You can fish with a worm, which is fine, and you can catch some fish, or you can shoot rabbits with a 22, but you can also, you know, shoot an elephant, okay, and feed a whole bunch of people. Now, my point is, is that people who have a large, strong, positive center of influence, when you drop these people, when these people are recruited into your coded organization, okay, what happens is, is that code explodes because birds of a feather, what? Flock. Flock together, okay? So just, you know, in naming some people, football coaches, school administrators, politicians, sheriffs, fire chiefs, uh, you know, uh, all different types of people that have a good, strong, positive center of influence within the community, these are wonderful people to go after if you want your business to explode. It, you know, if you go back and you trace people that have moved through the plan very rapidly, and you go, gosh, they're lucky. If you actually do some investigative work into their downline, a lot of times what you'll find is that they sponsored somebody who had a big center of influence and it exploded, okay? So all I'm saying is, is I, I'm also today, uh, God willing, going to teach you how to go what I call blue marlin fishing, okay? And blue marlin fishing is what? A trophy fish, right? That's what we're looking for. And uh, so the last one is the glow. The glow uh, is that unsaid 
you know, conversation, that, that, that internal fire that uh, where when you look at somebody, they're, they're outgoing, they're expressive, they're, uh, they're communicative, they're, they're people that love people, they like to help people, they're giving people, okay? And not everybody has that, and, don't, and, and I don't want you to feel like you've got to find somebody that has all five of these characteristics, but I am saying that if, they, if you find somebody who has the glow, you'll know it, right? You know the people that have the glow, that are outgoing, and those people seem to be like magnets or like the sun. They just attract other people, uh, and they're great to be around, and they're great to have in your organization as well. So, now I know a lot of you guys have been uh, sitting down for a while, and uh, I do appreciate uh, the fact that you're sitting down. Could you do me a favor and, uh, before I get into this, because I want to I make sure that we get this done before... And I know, you know, because once your blood goes to your rear end and it leaves your brain, okay, uh, then you're not going to be thinking. So can, if you can just stand up for just one second for me. And what I'd like for you to do is all you guys, okay, I'd like for all the guys to do me a favor and pull your wallet out, okay? Get your wallet out. Come on, everybody's got a wallet. And ladies, you got your purse? Where's your purse at? Okay, hold your purse up and hold your wallet up. Okay, hold it up high. Everybody, come on, help me out here. Okay, now I'm going to heal your pocketbook today. <laughs> so never say you didn't get your pocketbook healed. Okay, okay, sit back down. <laughs> my, daughter, my daughter used to ask me, Daddy, what do you do for a living? I said, I'm a financial evangelist. I wasn't lying to her. <laughs> <laughs> 